Hey, what's up? It's episode 74, pain points of wealth, and Russia is moving further in Ukraine as markets are going haywire. The volatility is extreme right now. We know the Fed's raising interest rates next month. What does this mean right now? Is it time to go to cash? Or is it time to take advantage of the volatility to create your wealth long term? Well, we're going to break it down for you from our vantage point. And today we're going to talk about annuities. Annuities aren't bought, they're sold. Is it a good investment, bad investment to have in your portfolio for your path to financial independence? Well, we're going to give you our thoughts on that as well. We got a great show. Hit the music. Hey guys, you know, a different day, different story. You know, one day it's all about the Ukraine and the Russian aggression, and the next day it's about the Federal Reserve. We had, you know, all eyes on Jay Powell this week talking about the moves he's making to get on top of inflation. So the good news is he's only going to raise the Fed funds rate by a quarter of 1%. market was thinking 50 basis points, but uh, and the market really celebrated that. But the next day, the Russian aggression's back on the front page, giving investors a reason to sell. What is amazing about all this, and you know, my heart's out to the Ukrainian people. I spent a lot of time there. You know, I paid, played in a rock band, played literally every uh, city in Ukraine, and a lot of these cities right now are under duress. They're literally being sieged. So, you know, that's something that uh, I obviously feel really, really bad about. Um, but it also reminds you that, man, the world's always in flux, right? There wasn't a strategist at the beginning of the year that said, like, hey, you know what? I think Russia is going to invade Ukraine this year. That's going to push up commodity prices, oil prices, and create extreme volatility in the market. I didn't find one market strategist at the beginning of the year that actually said that. Did you guys? Well, actually, guys, uh, Kathy Woods, who supposedly, the new Warren Buffett, said, don't even go into oil. It's like whale oil. It's going away. You know, everything's going to be green energy. Put money in my ARC fund, and you would have lost 70% of your money. So, you know, hey, sometimes they're, you know, often wrong, but they're never in doubt. That's why you got to diversify. Tech's not the place to be right now, guys. Yeah, it reminds me of my, my favorite Mike Tyson quote, right? Everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face. <laughs> so, and that's really, honestly, that's so indicative of how investing works. You know, everything changes on a dime. So all those, you know, spec, all the speculation on what's going to happen this year in the market, the economy, it's all well and good, but it doesn't mean anything because it's really the surprises that you don't anticipate that move everything. And that's why we're such a big advocate of having what we call that all-weather portfolio. You, know, you just got to own everything. Like, you know, we own commodities in our portfolio for 10 years, and they sucked. They did nothing. And just all of a sudden, on the turn of the dime, commodities now are the hottest investment since sliced bread. And it's just something we've always had in our portfolio. You, know, you just always have to have everything in your portfolio because you don't know when it's going to work. Great lesson here, boys. Well, right. That's like, Chris, hold on a second. I got, I got to straighten something out. Doesn't he know, Ryan, know there's inflation? <laughs> right. So it doesn't change on a dime now. It's been inflated. It's it changes on a quarter. All right. Come on. We got to We got to adjust to the time. <laughs> Clever, Bob. <laughs> well, you know, Dad, I, I really think that it would benefit the world if Ryan would come out of retirement and go back and uh, tour the Ukraine again with his rock band to see a soul. I think uh, I think that will cause uh, definitely cause some uh, some some peace to happen. It's like Live Aid, exactly like Live Aid Ukraine version. I was looking for my CD the other day, Chris. Do you still have that CD? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know what, guys? Like you know, I'm talking to a lot of my clients, and you know, their reaction to this is like, you know, every, all the average investors, like, why don't we just go to cash? There's nothing in our portfolio that's up right now. But you made that point, Dad. You know, things like pipelines, you know, commodities, they're all doing really well right now. So. You know, it's not an all or nothing proposition. No, it isn't. And it, it never it never should be. And of course, without volatility, there's no opportunity. And without cash flow, there's no way to take advantage of that opportunity. And without diversification, there's nothing to sell to take advantage of the opportunity. You know, every correction in history, and just trust me, guys, this is a correction. There's never been a regional conflict where we've gone into a bear market. And as big as Russia is and as small as Ukraine is, this is still a regional conflict. Yeah, what's interesting about it is, though, they still are about something like a third of, of the world's wheat, uh, anything that they call them the breadbasket economies. So, you know, they, they do have a very, very big impact on commodity prices and obviously oil, uh, you know, Russia being a huge exporter of oil. And, and again, you know, so they are small and they probably don't have a huge 
impact on the global economy in general, but there are pockets that they do affect, like the commodity markets. And again, this is why you have to own everything in your portfolio. No one could have told you that at the beginning of the year unless they had a crystal ball. And man, oh man, my crystal ball broke like at least a decade ago. So I couldn't help you there. But the funny thing is, I talked to one of my clients this morning. He just got his February statement and he pointed out to me, he's like, you know, Chris, he's like, I kind of panicked last month. He's like, but I looked at my statement and it really didn't move as much as I expected it to. He's like, there's a lot of bluster, a lot of volatility, but at the end of the day, it didn't really go anywhere. Well, that's the biggest fear I have. I don't have anybody panicking right now either. We've done a great job of educating people over the last 45 years or, you know, there's a panic to come. But, you know, I embrace panic. You have to embrace volatility because you can't predict it. It's, it's always about having that cash flow. And if you really look at the markets right now, the only bear market that's happened is in the area we've been warning everyone about on this podcast for 74 episodes is disruptive, innovative technology. Some of these companies are down 70%, guys. So underlying you know, the uh, index, these, these areas have gotten hit. So there's still lots of opportunity. I think that bubble's burst and that train's going away. So you know, tech's still a wreck, if in my opinion. But the other thing to think about too is, and we always talk about the past as prologue, and you can really use the past to help your investment strategy. And everything that's worked in the past is working now, right? We've had high inflation for months, and we know historically what's the greatest inflation hedge? Commodities, right? Energy, oil is a fantastic inflation hedge, and that's what's working really well right now, just like it has in history. Right, We have geopolitical issues that are causing tremendous volatility, and you're getting what we call flight to quality. Whenever the you-know-what hits the fan, money goes to the bond market. Right, Bond prices are up right now. Gold. You know, we don't love gold, but historically, when things look really dour and there's uncertainty in the world, money flows into gold. It's flowing into gold right now. Um, and those old-school value stocks are barely moving right now. We talked about companies that have dividends, that can raise their prices with inflation. Well, they've been a safe haven here. So, you know, and again, we've talked about Bitcoin being the new inflation hedge, the new gold. And, you know, it's absolutely done horrible. It's down 30% over the last three months as we've had geopolitical issues and if we've had high inflation. So it is something new. We never knew if it was going to work. It's not working. But those time-tested old-school investments still work in crisis. Right, so you're going to tell me that, that that giant gold safety that you have, you're going to take that over to the pawn shop today and uh, get rid of your gold? <laughs> that's it. That's it. Get rid of all my gold watches, which I have several. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, I wouldn't be able to do this podcast without Ryan wearing his gold chains, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so stylish. I don't want to see him cash out yet. But, and this is why we're so optimistic. I mean, let's, let's, let's face it, right? What happened in New York this week, right? They, they said no more masks, no more Vax ID cards, right? You're allowed to live your life again. Uh, the economy is going to boom, right? People are flush with cash. They're tired of being stuck in. People are going to start to travel. The economy is going to keep booming. You know, supply chain will eventually, you know, become unclogged. And, you know, what happens is the market looks forward. When you look at prices going down right now, it's what I call a price adjustment. It's a math problem, right? Interest rates are going to be higher. Inflation's higher. You put that into the equation, you get a different answer. It's lower. But you know what? Something that I don't hear on the financial news at all is the P.E. ratio on the S&P 500. It's very reasonable right now. Now it's a good time to be buying, not panicking. Yeah, no, exactly right. And that's the whole idea. Keep your eye on the prize because with all the headlines right now being so horrible because we have this horrible conflict, the reality of it is the U.S. economy looks super strong. I mean, you can't like ignore the fact that there's trillions upon trillions of dollars sitting in cash right now that's going to find its way into the stock market and push it up enormously somewhere in the next couple months. And, you know, to miss that boat and not be invested here is going to be a huge mistake. And we'll call it out episodes later and say, we told you, but, you know, you got to listen to us now because that's the reality of things. It's almost like we've got all this rocket fuel just getting ready to come back into the markets. All you got to do is be a story. And guys, you go back and you study the decline to the market whenever you have a 10%, 15%, 20% correction, within 12 months, you have a spectacular rally. You don't know when that's going to come, right? So don't let the short-term pain make you miss out on that long-term gain. Hey, I hope you're enjoying episode 
74 pain points of wealth. If you like our content, love our content, we're literally up to 70,000 downloads. Thank you for the support. Please give us a five-star ratings if you're listening to this on iTunes. Give us a like if you're watching on YouTube. Click that notification bell. It's going to be updated every week of all our new content. Your support is what helps us do this every week. Leave some comments. Tell us what you want us to talk about, anything financially related. We'd love to discuss it for you. And again, we appreciate your support. And also, if you have a friend, family member that could benefit from our content, please pass our podcast along. So thanks again. We appreciate the support. It's the tipping point. This is where we pinpoint the pain point having the biggest impact on your wealth right now. And of course, that's always P-A-Y-N-E. So Chris and Bob, you know, at our firm, Pain Capital and Management, we know we manage over a billion dollars, over a thousand clients, and we probably review about 50 portfolios a month. I mean, we see every investment strategy under the sun. We've had to study pretty much every investment product that's been created and one of the most complex type of investments that we constantly see, and you typically get pitched when you're trying to be financially independent, are annuities. And they come in lots of different sizes, lots of different flavors. They sound so simple when they're pitched to you, but when you start breaking them down, they're extremely complex. So I thought we could address today, you know, are annuities good investments? Are they bad investments? Are they something you should be considering in your portfolio? Well, let me tell you guys, I've been doing this for close to 47 years. You can't tell by looking at me, you know, um, been around a long time. And, you know, I do have a lot of gray hair, but you know why I don't have more gray hair? You know why I have my hair? Because I never sold annuities to my clients that I care about. Uh, you know, when we started paying capital management back in 2008, a good friend of mine, was in the annuity sales business. He said, Bob, it's just like what you do for your clients. You know, you, you build a really good portfolio and we just, we, all we want to do is wrap it in a thin veneer of insurance. <laughs> yeah, that thin veneer can be like 3 4% a year. And if you compound that on your money or take that out of your, your, your principal over like 10, 20 years, that could be like a million dollars, millions of dollars. And we've run these analyses before, but that thin veneer can cost you millions because those underlying fees can just be absurd in these investment products, if we can even call them investments. You know, my guys, I'm, I'm starting to rethink this. You know, he did retire at 55 with millions, um, but I don't think his clients did. So I, I'd love to call his clients and ask him where their yacht are. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way I look at annuity, it's kind of like a dictatorship. It's like, you know, you give up all your freedom with the perceived guarantee that everything's going to be okay. But at the end of the day, it's really not. Yeah, because they give you these very sexy um, pitches like income for life, right? You don't have the ups and downs of the market, and it's guaranteed, which, oh, my God, is anything guaranteed in this life? No. Oh, no, no, there are, right? There's two things guaranteed, death and taxes. In the investment business, you can't say guaranteed. They throw it around like it's no big deal. But, you know, contractually, it's guaranteed by the insurance company. But the insurance company is a company. It's a capitalist society, right? Capitalist economy. Companies fail. Insurance companies fail. Did an annuity company ever fail? Sure did. Baldwin United back in the 80s. Everybody lost their money. The thing, if you look at it, you know, if you really do an analysis of these annuities, the insurance companies are, are really experts at, the, at being actuaries. And they figure out you know, when on average you're going to die. And they basically structure it so that the money that you pay into it, all they've done is given your money back before you pass away. Well, that's a really good point because one of the things, like to get something, you give something up, right? So with an annuity, you get this income for life. Sounds amazing, but you give up your principal. And there's nothing more dangerous than when you're in that, what we call that financial red zone. Maybe you're five, 10 years out from retirement, you're retired now. And to give up your principal in retirement, because if you have an emergency or something, you want to actually get into that principal, kind of stinks. Um, you know, and the other thing is you may get it back in a death benefit, but the problem is those fees eat away at that death benefit every year. So by the time you actually do pass, Chris, to your point with the actuarial tables, there's nothing left for your heirs. The insurance company took everything. Hey guys, we had a new client come in last week, um, listened to this podcast, became a client. So thank you very much. And she said to me, she goes, I don't understand. Why did my insurance agent take the money that I earned that I paid taxes on, right? My after-tax dollars, put it into an investment. So now when it comes out, I'm paying taxes on it again. I mean, is this a secret government strategy to get you know the, the middle class to pay more money in taxes? Well, that's a great point too, right? They, they always get pitched for their tax efficiency because it grows tax deferred. Well, it's like, you know that tax-free bonds, or if you own tax-free bonds, they're tax-free. Dividends now are at a 15% rate, 
Whereas money coming out of an annuity, you're paying ordinary income rates, which are the highest rates, and you already paid ordinary income on your money, Bob. It's like, God, what a scam. Yeah, and you can own a portfolio of high-quality municipal bonds where your income is tax-free, you're 100% liquid, and like a couple of my clients had the panic, um, not a panic, but in the panic when the COVID crisis hit, they had a, they had a purchase, they had large purchases, and they needed money. So they, they could liquidate their bond portfolio. But what they actually did was go in and borrow money at 1.5% on margin and maintain their portfolio. You know, what would happen if you had to take that same money out of an annuity, Chris? You can't. It's tied up. It's locked up. You can't get to it. It's not a fixed income alternative, guys. You got a medical emergency? Sorry, can't help you, hon. I can't get my money. You know, you've got a business opportunity. Sorry, can't take advantage of this opportunity. Can't get my money. I mean, what a horrible product to have position sold you because you said, Rai, these are never bought. Right. It's like, uh, Bob, your, your famous line, it's like when you're buying an annuity, it's like eating Chinese food. Sound tastes so good going down, but you feel so empty later. And that's the experience I've had. People are like, oh yeah, I bought that annuity. It sounded great. And then they're like, I don't remember how this works. It seems more complicated than I thought. Once you call the insurance company and you actually get the rundown, they're so complicated. There's all this math. And to Chris's point, the math is typically convoluted because the actuarials have figured out the way to make it so that you don't benefit the most, even though you think you are, because they cap your upside in some cases, right? But they limit your downside. But really, what they realize is markets only go up big in any given year. Uh, but they cap your upside at a very minimal return on the uh, on the upside per se. You know, you're, you're just never really making out. I mean, I'm like, it sounds complicated as I'm talking about it. Hey, hey, Rob. To be fair though, let's let's look at the bright side. It's the best of three here. The broker made money. The insurance company made money. The client didn't. But hey, two out of three ain't bad, right? And I'll tell you what, Rob. Ever since we brought Chris on this, this podcast, he's he's become cynical. I think you've poisoned him. As you always say, that a healthy dose of cynicism is not a bad thing. Well, here's the biggest issue that I see, and this is, I feel bad for everyone who's stuck in these contracts. Um, we're going through a period now where it's very different. You know, last 40 years, low inflation, actually deflationary environment. We're seeing inflation. Now, I hope we don't go back to the hyperinflation of the 70s. It was horrible, guys. I can't, can't imagine how bad it was. But we just had a 7.5% year-over-year rate on the CPI. That could see 8% on the next report. And inflation is the biggest issue. It's the Biggest risk every investor has in their portfolio right now in their lives, and these things are horrible in terms of inflation hedges. Well, that's a great point because once you get that fixed income and you give up your principal, you get the same amount every single year, yet your cost of living is going up every year. So whatever amount you're getting, if it's 5000 a month, 10000 a month, well, in tomorrow dollars, that's only like getting half that amount each month because it doesn't adjust with inflation. Meanwhile, a diversified portfolio with bonds, dividend-paying stocks, the cash flow over time is increasing exponentially to keep up with inflation. In fact, if you look at stock dividends, they've increased over the inflation rate since 1950. So you're right, Bob. It doesn't solve for the most important, most critical aspect of your financial independence plan, and that is inflation. And that is like one of the dirty little secrets no one talks about when it comes to that quote-unquote income for life. Well, the reason stocks are a hedge against inflation is simply because they do increase their earnings and they, you benefit by the increasing dividend flow. The number one thing I noticed on every insurance contract I ever looked at is they keep the dividends. The insurance company keeps it. They don't give you the dividends. That's how you pay for some of these things. But I'll tell you the thing that really, really ticks me off is you see every city I go to, there's a commercial with an insurance salesman pitching annuities. And they always have testimonials <clears throat> from their investors. Well, there's no fees that I have ever been charged. Well, how is this insurance agent able to pay for a commercial on national television or local television if they're not making any money? You know what? That's a great point, Bob. Um, that's it, right? Because they get the commissioned salesman gets paid handsomely up front to sell you that annuity. So, you know, not only are they charging you fees when they tell you they're not charging you fees, which is another story altogether. If they tell you're not charging fees, they're definitely charging fees, is they're getting paid like some cases like 5%, 8% up front so they can afford to advertise all over the place. Like, yeah, it's like the biggest red flag ever. Well, again, the insurance companies will mask that by telling you, oh, no, that's not a, that's not a charge. There's a surrender charge if you take your money out. Yeah, what's the surrender charge? The commission they paid the salesman. That's what it is, and that's why you can't get your money out. So it's, 
It's, it, you know, when you have to deceive people to sell something, it, not, it means it's probably a really bad product. Um, and if you can't explain how this works to your child or grandchild in five seconds, well, then you better, better take a hard look and maybe find a better way to invest your money. Wouldn't you say, guys? Actually, you know what? I'd rather burn in hell. You'll never sell anybody. Hey, hope you're enjoying episode 75, Pain Points of Wealth. Bob, Chris, and I now have a collective 75 years helping individuals just like you with your planning and investing. This is literally what we do every single day. Everything you hear on this podcast, along with some due diligence of your own, can help you get ahead financially literally at any stage of your journey. But if you want a more hands-on approach and you're really looking to get to your financial independence goals, well, if you have over $750,000 saved for retirement, we will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we literally look at everything for you. We'll go through every investment you own, those annuities, insurance products, brokerage products, show you where you can reduce cost, optimize your portfolio for taxes, do a complete savings and income plan to make sure you're on track to be financially independent. Simply go to www.paincm.com slash financial plan to see if you qualify. There's no other firm out there that will do this work up front. We go through it all. We'll build you your own financial portal. Literally go to www.paincm.com slash financial plan if you have over $750,000 saved for retirement to see if you qualify for a free financial review. All right, gentlemen, it's the hidden facts of finance, random financial facts that may surprise you or even shock you. All right, Bob. The 15 managers with the highest performing funds in 2021, these would be hedge fund managers, raked in a collective $15.8 billion last year. Citadel's Ken Griffin jumped to first place. He hauled in $2 billion in 2021. Not a bad payday. Well, I guess that's why Ken was able to buy the most expensive property ever sold in the city of New York. And, you know, Ryan, I'm just wondering, why haven't you been invited over for cocktails? <laughs> Ken. Call me up, man. I'm here in the city. I'd like to hang out with you. Chris, the global value of crypto grew by nearly $1.5 trillion last year, compared with the S&P 500's rise to nearly $9 trillion in market value. But Bitcoin's Achilles heel is instability. Increasing the cryptocurrency allocation to 10% of your portfolio, which a lot of people have more than that, triples the overall portfolio volatility by nearly 23%. So if you want to guarantee to create more volatility, just add Bitcoin. Right. Are you saying that uh, having a 40% swing in cryptocurrency in the course of a year is volatility? I mean, for a, for a real cowboy like you, it's no big deal. That's why I put my money in Bobcoin. Hey, hey, Bobcoin never fluctuates, just like his hair. It's always the same. So Bob, of the class of 2020, about 75% or 187 SPACs, these are like IPOs where you don't have to go through that traditional route um, because the financials aren't as great, traded at or below $10, that's the price they're issued at, uh, which counted for 248 SPAC listings in 2020. Man, oh man, that means these things have been horrible investments, Bob. Right, what could go wrong, right? You got a special purpose acquisition company where you get a blank check in a shell corporation where after they check, cash your check, they're going to let you know how they're going to invest your money, and it should work out really well. Unfortunately, it didn't. Yeah. I know, by the way, Wall Street is paid handsome fees to uh, sell you these. Shocking. Wall Street wins again. <laughs> it's 100 to Wall Street, zero to the retail investor. 100% of the times, you lose. Go figure. Chris, 25 years ago today, Bowie bonds were issued on the U.S. Stock Exchange linked to David Bowie's back catalog albums with money earned on the bonds via interest from royalties. Investors could expect to make 8% profit in about 10 years. I want some of those Bowie bonds. Hey, you know what, Ry? I took a, took a page out of Ziggy Stardust's book and have those royalties go out into space. All right, gentlemen, another great show. Of course, we had to add some, some good 70s rock trivia into our show today. Hope you enjoyed episode 74, Pain Points of Wealth. If you like our content, love our content, give us that five-star rating. Give us a like on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so you can be updated every week of all our new content. We appreciate your support. As always, stay loose and keep an open mind.